Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Wiboff, and this is BFIS 123. So this is just an introductory video about how the course is going to work. Um, I'm going to just start off by kind of listing the, the differences between this course and previous courses in the sequence. If you've been in 121 and 122 here at UW Bothell for the past two quarters, um, then a lot of this will look familiar, but there are some differences. After that, I'll go through everything for people who may not be more familiar or just want to see a refresher, and I'll share the Canvas site and talk through some of the major points there. So if you have taken 121 and 122 before, the highlights for what's different, um, there are going to be fewer uh, expert TA questions and more um, strategic and interactive style questions. So the interactive questions this quarter will be through Poll Everywhere. So they'll be available on Canvas and you'll submit your answers on Poll Everywhere. Um, you will get most of the credit for just participating in the assignment. Um, though as the quarter goes on, we may attribute some of the credit towards getting the correct answers. Uh, I'll decide on the exact mix soon and let you know. There are also some strategic problems, a lot more than before. As you notice, I said problems. Each week, I'll post a variety of problems but I'll only ask you to submit three. Um, so three sub strategic problems to submit, but I'll provide extra. So those extra can serve as practice problems. And then I'll go over all of the interactive and strategic problems in a video each week. So there's a lot more problems in the strategic and interactive format, which means a lot more problems that I'm going over in video form. And to balance that out, there are a fair bit fewer um, expert TA problems each week. So there's one problem set for expert TA each week and a much higher weight of strategic and interactive problems. Okay, um, so let's switch over to, that's like kind of the new stuff. Let's switch over to summarizing the course as a whole for anyone who wants to kind of hear about it from scratch. Maybe you weren't here um, taking this online in the previous two quarters. So this is an asynchronous course, meaning that you have a set amount of work to do each week that you can do at any time during the week that is suitable to you. Um, every single assignment in this course is due on Fridays. So that said, I don't recommend actually sitting down Thursday night to do all these assignments. Um, there is a weekly schedule on the Canvas page that kind of gives you recommended dates to work on everything, and you can feel free to follow that. You can modify as needed to suit your own schedule but you do need to submit every assignment on the week that it is due. So everything is due on Friday. Um, there are no required meetings for this course. You can do the entire course on your own time. Um, there will be interactive help sessions several times during the week that you can come to to talk about the interactive problems, strategic problems, um, to work on the expertise of problem sets, really anything, you are welcome to come talk to me or the peer facilitators during these interactive help sessions. There's also Piazza, a message board where you can ask and respond to questions. So if you are um, having trouble with a problem, you can post your question to Piazza. Odds are somebody else has the same questions. So it's really useful to post to Piazza. If you are feeling like, hey, actually, I understand this stuff really well, you can answer questions on Piazza. Either way, there is an expectation that you'll post to Piazza a certain number of times per quarter. So on week two, there will be an assignment saying, hey, you have you posted to Piazza at least twice? Um, and around mid-quarter, there will be assignments saying, hey, have you posted to Piazza at least five times? Um, these posts can be questions or answers, right? So if you don't need to use Piazza to ask any questions, you can pop on and answer other people's questions to get your credit for that assignment. Uh, last but not least, there is uh, the Quantitative Skills Center. So the QSC is open for online tutoring. They have physics qualified tutors. Um, if you can't make any of the interactive help sessions to talk to me or the peer facilitators, and you've asked your question on Piazza and gotten an answer, but you still feel like you need more help, um, the Quantitative Skills Center is there as a uh, next, next resource that you can use um, if you've kind of exhausted everything else or nothing else is really working for you you can use the qsc and get some one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, on whatever you like so let's uh bring up the canvas site here and talk a bit more about the structure so 
So this is the Canvas front page. This is our main point of contact for everything in the course. So you can see down here, there are interactive help sessions. Um, right now, I've only got one on the schedule, but there will be others that show up down here soon. So these links here, course overview, lecture course format, and so on, will always be available down at the bottom of the page here. And this is essentially your syllabus broken up into little pieces. So you can read here about the overview of the course, right? how the course operates. This is the weekly schedule is what I was talking about before, kind of the recommended dates that I think you should do each component. Remember that everything is technically due on Friday, but we recommend you kind of spread out the work throughout the week in this format. There's also the late policy for everything here. Certain assignments are not accepted late. Problem sets are accepted late with the deduction. Um, so take a look at this. Um, you can ask for accommodation if you run into trouble and you have an extenuating circumstance, you can absolutely ask me for extensions or accommodations on things. Um, <clears throat> please do that over email. So all the details about grading and course policies and um, things like that are available here, right? So please read these pages. They take the place of the syllabus. Um, I will be communicating through announcements, right? I'll make an announcement each week. Uh, I will also be at interactive help sessions. Um, otherwise, the contact with me will be asynchronous, meaning that I'll be recording messages for you that you can watch whenever you have a chance. So let's look at a unit and we'll look at the modules to kind of gauge um, what these kind of look like. So let's say, uh, you know, starting on week two, we use simple harmonic oscillators. So the way a typical unit starts, there are some learning outcomes. So the learning outcome lists all the things you need to be able to do in this unit. So it has the reading, the chapters, and it has a specific list of things you need to be able to do. This is great to come back to for review when you're reviewing for the final and you want to see kind of what we did that unit and what you might need to practice if you've forgotten how to do any of these things. Um, the topic introduction is the next assignment. So the topic introduction has the specific readings you're doing this quarter or this uh, this unit has links to the textbook, right? The textbook is open source, available for free online. You can buy a hard copy if you like, um, but it is free online. And so the readings are uh, posted here. Videos are posted here. These are gonna be a mix of videos that myself and other UW you know, faculty have made, um, along with potentially some public domain videos, if any of those are relevant, plus uh, any FET simulations that I feel like are interesting. Um, one thing that's different this quarter is that these are now, um, these now have brief reading quizzes. So after doing the reading and watching the videos, there is a short, low stakes quiz, um, typically multiple choice, and you can answer five times. So the idea here is not to try to catch you off guard, but if you take this quiz and you get something wrong, it's an indication that, you know, maybe you need to jump back in and take another look at that chapter, or take another look at one of these videos to make sure you've uh, understood it well. So nice and low stakes quiz to kind of introduce the topic along with readings and videos. Then we go into the interactive and strategic problems. So the interactive problems are mostly conceptual questions um, and they are posted this quarter in the form of a Poll Everywhere survey. So make sure you log in to Poll Everywhere with your UW email so I can give you credit for completing it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can and should work with people on this, but you will each be submitting your own posts on Poll Everywhere. Um, Poll Everywhere will, on most questions, pop up to tell you whether or not you got the right answer. Um, like I said, this is going to mostly be graded on um, correctness, or sorry, mostly be graded on just submitting with a uh, small amount of credit going to correctness. I haven't decided on the exact balance yet, but I'll let you know when I do. The first one will probably just be based on participation. Um, please try and take this seriously. It is okay if you get it wrong. These are kind of where a lot of our learning is going to happen. We're going to try these problems out. We're going to see how they go. We're going to get some wrong and we'd be like, oh, okay, maybe I should look back at this unit again, or maybe I don't understand how to use this particular equation or this particular concept. Um, and like I said, you should feel free to work through this with other students, should feel free to ask for help on these questions on Piazza, should feel free to ask me questions at the interactive meetings, um, and you can feel free to ask the QSC about these questions. Anything like that is fine. 
So these are typically conceptual problems and we'll move into the strategic problems. So strategic problems are about problem solving. So in previous quarters, we had a mandatory problem solving template you had to fill out. Those are still available if you would like to do those. I am no longer going to require them. However, you do need to still do most of the things that show up in that template, right? I expect to see sketches. I expect to see a clear indication of what equations you're using. Um, so showing the work is how you get points on these problems. Show all your work, show what equations you used. If you're not sure what's necessary, you can absolutely use these problem solving templates. If you feel like you've gotten the feel of the problem solving template and what's necessary from previous quarters, you can do them in your own format, but just make sure you clearly indicate your sketch and what equations you're using um, in the problem solving process. If you click on the strategic problems, you might notice there are several of them. Right. So in this case, there are five strategic problems posted here. Only two of them in this case are being submitted. So the reason for that is I wanted to provide a lot more qualitative practice. So here are five questions you can work through in detail, and I will go over all five of these in my follow up video. But you only need to submit two of them. So two of them need to be written up and submitted. You can do this uh, using a tablet, writing them up online. You can do them on paper and scan and upload uh, using a scanner app, just like you did in previous quarters. Um, but the idea here is we're spending more time on these strategic and interactive problems uh, than we did last time. So after you've submitted your interactive problems on Poll Everywhere and you've uploaded your strategic problems, uh, the walkthrough will unlock. So this is a 40, 45 minute video of me going through all of the interactive and strategic problems um, and using that as kind of a jumping off point to talk about some of the material in greater depth. Um, so you'll get the most out of this walkthrough if you've already done the interactive and strategic problems and you'll kind of have given it a shot and you know gotten kind of a base level understanding of the material, then the points I make in the walkthrough will make a lot more sense. Um, and so, like I said, this is a much bigger chunk of your time than it was last quarter working on these problems and watching the video. The idea is to maximize the amount of time we get to put into problem solving um, and to get more feedback and see more problems worked all the way through compared to last quarter. Uh, as I mentioned before, right, for Piazza, there will be a couple of checkpoints. So week two is the first checkpoint on Piazza. You have to have... Um, submitted at least two questions or answer posts to Piazza to get points here. There will be another one later in the quarter, around mid-quarter, where you have to have done five. Um, then there are Expert TA problem sets. So Expert TA is our online homework system. Um, there are more details about how to get into Expert TA on the, uh, on the homepage. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, the idea is the Expert TA problems are more practice, they get graded immediately. So they're kind of good to, as kind of a later stage bit of practice, right? You get to do some more problems. You get to get feedback right away with whether or not you got them right. You can submit the expert TA questions as many times as you want. Um, the idea is, again, not to get them right on the first try, but to look at the ones you get wrong, deep dive into what happened and how you can solve similar problems in the future. Once you've done the expert TA questions, there is a quiz for each topic during the week. This will also be on Expert TA. Um, <clears throat> this also has unlimited submissions, but you will not get feedback until after the due date. So you'll get graded on these as a quiz, right? You have to eventually arrive at the right answer um, to get full credit. And so you can kind of see how the assignments kind of ramp up into higher and higher stakes. Um, so you want to use the earlier assignments in each unit as practice. And when you make mistakes to kind of pinpoint in on what you need to study more and read more about and ask more questions about, and by the time you sit down to do the quiz, you should be feeling quite confident in all the previous assignments so that you know you can get a good grade on the quiz. Um, there are no midterms in the weekly quizzes on Expert TA make use of uh, or replace the quiz, replace the midterm and represent the kind of high stakes assignment for each unit. There will be a final at the end of the course that kind of goes over um, the entirety of the course. Um, there's also going to be lab assignments, of course, me uh, meshed into this quarter. The lab assignments will have their own introduction, and that is coming soon. Um, otherwise, I just want to make sure I say one more time that 
there are lots of resources for you to engage with me and other people about the course material, right? These interactive help sessions. I know there's only one right now. There will be more. Um, Piazza can be a great first line. So Piazza is our message board, right? If you've been in this course previously, you used it. Post a Piazza. Um, add, if you don't have any questions, log in and answer someone else's question, right? Um, answering questions often helps you understand the material a bit better when you can think about it from another angle. And of course, the Quantitative Skills Center is there if you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring on particular problems, uh, either maybe if you can't make any of the interactive help sessions or you have, but you kind of still have extra questions, right? The Quantitative Skills Center is there and available online. Um, I also just want to draw attention to collaboration, right? A lot of these assignments are for learning and for practice. And so for things like the problem sets, interactive problems, strategic problems, working together with people is highly, highly encouraged. Um, you can do that in the virtual lounge space. So we have a space where we do these interactive help sessions called the virtual lounge. Um, it is always available for your use. It's open 24 seven. You can log in and use the virtual whiteboards. Um, you can, uh, post on Piazza to recruit people to come join you. If you have other ways of reaching out to classmates that you want to use to meet up to work on parts of the coursework, that's super encouraged. I would just say that if you are working with, um, if you're working with other people on the problem sets and the interactive problems, strategic problems, remember that the point is not to get them right and move on. The point is to use them to learn the material. So if you end up copying the answers to the strategic problems from somebody else, okay, you can submit them, but I wasn't even grading you on whether you got strategic problems right in the first place, right? They're there so that you can practice, so you can understand the material better, so that you can do better on the quizzes and the final, right? So make sure you're using these problems for what they're there for, right? They're low stakes. It's not about just like getting them done and getting the points straight. The point, it's more about like using these as meaningful practice to do the most learning. Um, as for the quizzes, right? The quizzes in the final are not collaborative. They're uh, supposed to be that you work intentionally on those. A please don't post answers on Piazza for the quizzes. Please don't go to the QSC with questions about the quizzes. Um, they will know which questions are on the quizzes and they will give you a grumpy speech. Um, the idea is that the, the quizzes and the final are testing your own work. And so if you're found to be um, taking someone else's answers and using them as your own on the quizzes or asking for help on Chegg or on um, some other resource, right? You can be, um, you'll be, you know, considered in violation of the student code for academic integrity and you can be reported and it's a big mess. So please don't do that for quizzes. Um, Expert TA also has some built-in systems to discourage posting answers to Chegg. So if you take an Expert TA homework or quiz problem and post it to Chegg, like the, Expert TA has embedded some like identifiers in the image it shows you. So they will reach out to you and be like, hey, don't do that. Um, and if they do it enough, they can revoke your privileges for Expert TA. And so again, it's just a mess. So please don't post uh, any Expert TA things to online resources because they are looking for that sort of thing. And I don't want you guys to get in trouble. Um, please don't use uh, other people's answers on quizzes or collaborate on quizzes um, since that's a reportable violation. But if you're working on the problem sets, interactive problems, strategic problems, as long as you're doing it consciously and you're, you know, talking to other people and using that to enhance your own learning, collaboration is super encouraged on the problem sets, interactive problems, strategic problems. Okay, so hopefully that is a pretty good introduction of the course. Um, if you have questions, make sure you take a look at the week one assignments. The first week is all just assignments that help you practice how to use Expert TA, how to use Piazza, how to get to the textbook, how to get to the virtual lounge, all this stuff. Um, so the whole first week is just about getting used to the course format. Um, post to Piazza if you have questions, if something in this video or something you encounter on the website doesn't make sense. Odds are you're not the only one with that question. So please post it to Piazza ahead of emailing me because that's gonna get you the fastest response um, since that response can come from anyone else in the course. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all I need as an introduction. Um, looking forward to a good quarter and I will be in touch soon.